Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with PBS 39 in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Today we are chatting with Tom Harrington, President and CEO of Valley Youth House. Tom has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Tom, for joining us today. Thank you. Great to be here. Talk about your organization, your founding, and how you serve this community. So Valley Youth House started in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, uh, 45 years ago as a shelter for homeless and runaway kids. And it all started because there was a 17 year old boy who got into a fight with his parents, ran away from home and was sleeping in, uh, in the garage of a neighbor's house, uh, unbeknownst to them. And when the neighbor went out one morning to drive away in his truck, he ran over the young man and unfortunately killed the young man. The community got together and said, we didn't even know we had a problem with runaway and homeless kids. We need to do something to help these young people. And so they opened up a shelter. The shelter still runs today. There's 13 beds there, uh, boys and girls that uh, who are in need of emergency housing. Uh, so either they've been taken out of their home uh, because of abuse or neglect, or they they're run away and they're literally homeless. Um, over the years, the organization has added additional programs. So if if a young person runs away from home, it's because there's problems in their home, and so the agency has has a a very robust. Um, counseling and therapy programs, series of counseling and therapy programs where we go into families' homes who are having some challenges and help them sort through those to, uh, to help prevent young people from either running away or being taken out of their homes. Uh, for young people who are in foster care, uh, we have a number of programs where we prepare them to get ready to leave foster care to live successfully on their own. So we start when they're 14 years old and we have a series of classes and programs where they learn basic life skills like how to cook a meal, how to do your laundry, how to do your, your finances and things like that. How to show up on time for a job, how to dress appropriately, all the things that our parents provide us with. But in the foster care system, very often children go through this process and they never have the kind of guidance that we would want our children to have. That's true. And, and uh, we know national statistics. 40% uh, of young people who leave foster care when they're 18 experience homelessness within a year. Because think about it, uh, those who have uh, kids at home who are 18, 19, 20 years old, when they're 18, are they ready to be on their own? Um, most of them are not. Right. Um, so we help them get ready to be successful, to live on their own, but we also provide housing for those young people. So that's another program that's evolved over the years that Valley Youth House offers. So one of the things that is um, interesting to look at is if you take a look at young people between certain ages, between let's take 14 to 18 or 14 to 22, mm -hmm. a certain proportion of those young people will be affected by certain predictable problems. They're not quite adult. They're not quite children. And if you take a look at the entire population, it's a pretty astounding percentage of our young people that are affected in this way. And this is one of the responses that we can as a community provide to those people. Absolutely, and what we find is uh, that of all the interventions that, uh, that, are, that can happen with a young person to help them be successful in going through that transition, the most important intervention is a positive relationship with a caring adult. Somebody who will be there, who will challenge them, who will believe in them, who will stick with them even when things get tough. And uh, I think that's, that's the secret of what's uh, helped Valley Youth House survive and thrive and grow for the past 45 years is the dedication of our staff members uh, and volunteers who support us, um, our willingness to stick with kids through tough times uh, to help them get to uh, a positive situation. And then you also skew much younger as well, and you also provide services to families. Talk, talk about some of those services. We're certified to run a number of uh, evidence-based um, behavior help uh, therapy programs, uh, family counseling programs, where we right now we have some 120 mobile therapists who go into to homes, uh, typically after school in the evenings, and uh, sit down with families and, and kids and talk through issues and talk about the relationships that the parents have with the children and talk through what might, what maybe what happened at school, why they aren't going to school or why there's a problem uh, uh, at school or within the family. 
and uh, we have some uh, really good outcomes uh, by having trained uh, master's level therapists working with families to help them address some of these issues. In terms of uh, the number of people served, you serve how many uh, throughout this entire area? So we serve over 22,000 young people uh, throughout 18 counties in Pennsylvania. We're primarily in Eastern Pennsylvania, but we just started providing services in Western Pennsylvania uh, in a program called a Host Homes Program. So this is a program, very low cost, uh, but very highly effective where we find uh, teenagers who are experiencing homelessness and we match them up with a family that will take them in for a period of time to help them get on their feet. And then how many staff do you have? We have uh, 450 staff members uh, working throughout this 18 county region. And do you also have volunteers? We have uh, lots of volunteers. So uh, we, we're governed by a board of directors. Uh, we have 35 board members in the Lehigh Valley. We have a very active board of governors in the Philadelphia region. Um, and they pr help us provide the resources uh, to provide uh, the programs. We also have a, a really amazing summer camp program that we run for young people who are in foster care. And uh, that the camp is amazing. Um, it's, it's all the fun uh, activities that you normally see at summer camp, but uh, our staff, our, our master's level therapists um, or college students who are studying counseling and uh, social work and therapy. And so all the activities that they go through are presented in a, um, in a, in a therapeutic way. So for instance, when you complete uh, an obstacle on a ropes course, uh, then they'll sit down as a group and they'll talk about what are the obstacles you face when you go home and how, what have you learned here at camp that can help you overcome these type of obstacles in your real life? Well, it's also uh, true that when you can bring together people who have common experiences, perhaps different in detail, mm -hmm. but common in terms of impact, mm -hmm. um, it, it provides a wonderful experience uh, to unpack and to share and to gain another person's insight that they've won through hard experience themselves. But we don't carry stickers on our head to say, I've had this experience. True. And this is a way that you can bring people together with a bit of assur assurance that there are some commonalities here. And, the, and then you provide a safe space and you provide diver diverting activities. And then you just sort of let go, let things happen. Uh, you know, some of the more powerful weeks at camp, we have an LGBTQ week. and. Uh, uh, I remember a young lady telling me that this was the first time she felt comfortable in her skin. Uh, very impactful. We have a siblings week. So brothers and sisters who have been taken out of their home and living in foster care. And families, sometimes separately. Separately, not living with each other. They have one week a year that they're together with their brothers and sisters. And at the end of that week, they have this uh, activity where they say things to each other and launch these uh, um, these balloons into the air with promises to each other uh, is very powerful. And they almost caught the dining hall on fire one night, but it was a, it was a, a great activity and, uh, and a life-changing impact on young people. So you, you talked about the expansion of the host homes program, and these are uh, part of your aspirations and your plans for expanding services over the next uh, period of time. But you also have a street, a street outreach and housing uh, um, uh, program for homeless teams. Talk about that. Yeah, so we have street outreach teams in the Lehigh Valley, Bucks County, Harrisburg, and Philadelphia. Uh, these are full-time staff members um, who are out on the street every day uh, finding kids, reaching kids who are living uh, on the street. So uh, we know where they're at. Our staff know where these kids congregate uh, in abandoned homes. And very bridges. often the staff themselves have connection into this, this experience. Yes, so uh, we make an effort of, of hiring staff who have lived experiences and uh, they can relate to these young people. So uh, the street outreach team uh, is amazing and, and there are homeless youth in every community that we serve and most of us don't know it. Uh, I see them, I run into them, and then I'll see them the next day walking down Hamilton Street in Allentown, and I realize I, if, I would never have known that was a homeless young person right. other than I met them last night at a laundromat. Well, that's the thing. The coping mechanisms are amazing. Our, uh, human beings can cope with so much. Mm -hmm. We associate homelessness with a certain image 
but that image is just a small portion of the of the total homeless population. Mm -hmm. The homeless population consists of working mothers and fathers, and single people and kids, and and young people, and and you know when the people who actually get get exposed are very often law enforcement, first responders, uh, emerg emergency medical people, and people like your staff who actually go out and make sure that they are connecting with these youth who have these invisible lived experiences. I talked to a 17 year old young man at our shelter a couple weeks ago, and uh, I asked him, you know, how did you end up here? He said that his mom was in jail, uh, his dad lost his job. They were living in a car with his dad and his sister, and uh, he couldn't take it anymore, and so he, he left and he was living in an abandoned house uh, in Phillipsburg, New Jersey, uh, until the police caught him and they took him to our shelter. Uh, he said in the first 10 days he was there, he gained about 10 pounds because finally he had food to eat every day. That's a resilient young man. Oh, during all that time, he kept going to school. He was gonna get his high school diploma. So, and we find young men like that, young ladies like that, who uh, they've got a lot of drive, they've got a lot of talent, they have a lot of potential. And our job is to give them the tools they need and the support they need to be successful. In terms of how your funding works, you have a budget of about $30 million. How do you put knit together these resources to provide this service that, that is such a, such a treasure to the community? So the foundational support, uh, uh, for these programs comes from federal, state, and county uh, sources. Your tax dollars at work. Correct. And I think most people would say that if, uh, it, that that's a good use of money to help support a young person with potential who's hit in a tough spot. Uh, those grants typically come with match requirements, um, that a 20 or 25 percent match. So we go out to the business community, to the uh, philanthropic community, and ask for contributions uh, to help with that. And as we get to tell the story to more people about who we are and what we're doing, we find the community is very generous. So our goal is to, to uh, ensure that every young person is part of a nurturing community to help them grow into successful adults. Tom Harrington, thank you so much for sharing the work of the Valley Youth House and your staff and your wonderful volunteers. And thank you so much for your insights. Thank you. Appreciate the time to be here.